Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Payam Safa. Migration to Internet Protocol IP networks has been underway for some time. It has opened many doors to the service providers like enabling through remote production, future-proofing the flexibility and scalability of the broadcast networks and utilizing the commercially off-the-shelf resources. Australia is certainly one of the pioneers in adapting and embracing this new technology. Major outside broadcast providers, hidden owners and play-out facility owners have already well adapted this technology. Although there is a fair number of vendors who can provide cutting-edge solutions at the core and edge side of the network, at the time of recording this video, there is only one tool that can cover all of your monitoring and analysis requirements in the uncompressed video over IP domain. This is called VB440 IP Pro by BridgeTech. It has some unprecedented features that make it a must to have monitoring and analysis tool if you are thinking IP. Today I would like to demonstrate the proof of concept that we did at Tectal to control VB440 widgets by a tactile panel by Skyhawk. I hope you find this video interesting. Before jumping into details, please let me give you a bit of rundown on the kit that we built here. On this screen, we have the widget that we designed for the purpose of this demonstration. The VB440 IP probe also sitting here, and the Rack Fusion 1 sits over there. This is manufactured by Skyhort that, by the way, is a Danish company. We control the widgets by this panel to give a great good old sense of tactility to the operators. I guess dealing with tactile panels is still and will stay a preferred way of operating devices at any master control rooms and outside broadcast trucks, isn't it? Just a quick note that we are controlling a probe that actually lives at BridgeTech Lab in Oslo, Norway. Not this one in here. Simply because that probe has access to multiple ST2110 flows with various formats. Any delay you may see on the videos is due to the fact that all monitoring feeds will have to traverse the internet all the way from Oslo to our office in Sydney. But in actual remote production or playout environments, the VB440 probe usually sits much closer to the camera, vision mixer, or the playout facilities. The glass to glass latency between the camera to this HTML5 based <coughs> page for an 8k flow has been measured to be less than two frames excluding the path delay of course i think this should be great news for any operator next i would like to give you some introduction to the vb440 ip pro and also rack fusion one panel here is the native interface of the vb440 which we call it by the way instrument view this interface is called Instrument View, as you can see here, that is available to the users out of the box. VB440 is a breakthrough in monitoring and analysis of high bitrate broadcast media traffic as defined in ST2110 and ST2022-6 for core broadcasting networks, production studios, master control centers, and outside broadcast vehicles and venues. It also has a lot of application in IP-based playout facilities by enabling 24-7 continuous monitoring of all 2022-6 sources with IP packet flow behavior analysis. So we can go to the uh, view which is called expert view or engineering view here. Uh, the input interfaces support speeds of uh, up to 10, 25, 40, 50 and up to actually 100 gigabit per second on dual port. So as you can see this one is the first uh, interface and this is one the secondary interface or the second interface uh, at the moment only one is 100 gig uh, connected and the top two uh, these two are uh, basically the management um, ports uh, it has two ma physical management ports EM1 and EM2 
so uh, it can analyze SD, HD, HD, SDR, 4K, 4K, HDR, and also 8K services. SD 2022-7 redundancy is also monitored and analyzed when connected to both primary and secondary networks. Let me actually show that to you under this menu. Yeah, you can see actually this is this is the uh, primary and secondary status. This is the recovery. The protection state is of course protected as indicated here, and you can see the uh, recoverable loss, uh, unrecoverable loss, and the path difference between the primary and secondary. And you can actually switch between the primary and secondary videos if you want to have a, a look at the health of the you know visual health of the video as well. Uh, and then for the, for the PTP, we have the PTP menu here, uh, which gives you this information. Let me close the diagnosis page. Uh, and then on the PTP, uh, it's provided with ST2059-2 clock analysis, clock source detection and listing, as well as clock accuracy and clocks. Uh, it also measures an accurate path delay for individual flow. So this is basically the um, clock class. And then you have the accuracy, the priority one and two. Uh, you see the value assigned to it and the uh, time delta and time source to see if it's actually uh, locked to the GPS or it's, it's a free run. The probe can accommodate up to eight simultaneous users from local or remote location. It features a user interface provided by an HTML5 standard web browser. This gives operation and production team remote access to an analytics tool for many streams in parallel, in real time, and from different locations. And it should be a very exciting news for the users. Of course, you can find more information by visiting www.bridgetech.tv. And the next stop is Rack Fusion One Panel. It has 12 awesome four-way uh, buttons over here with 12 multi-level LEDs and 16 mini buttons over there and four backlit uh, encoders or knobs uh, all with RGB coloring and graphical OLED displays for function legends. With power over Ethernet support, the panel can fix perfectly actually in your rack with minimal cabling. It can also be seated on your desk. There is a three session at the section actually at the back of this panel where you can run the cables without getting in the way in different installation scenarios. It can be also managed by um, Python scripting. Also, uh, Skyhawk produce other type of uh, generic uh, panels. In, in what we can do, as an instance, uh, we can get a camera RCP panel and use spare knobs and buttons to control the widget. So imagine by combining uh, the camera control and widget control in one tactile panel, how much space can be saved in ever decreasing space in remote production facilities. In an alternative scenarios, for instance, you can consolidate the talkback controls with the widget controls in one uh, tactile panel, in one audio space. So the possibilities are really endless here, and how cool is that? Going back to the demo setup, again, here is our widget as an example. These widgets are basically HTML5 based full motion video monitors. You can fully customize the layout and look or style of the page by placing the blocks in different positions so there is no restrictions uh, whatsoever in that area. Using different styles, etc., etc., all of this possible. Moreover, you can access this web page on your iPhone, iPad, Mac, or Windows machine anywhere on your LAN or from a remote location. Here in the middle of the page, as you can see, we have four videos which could be the flows coming from your 2110 cameras, for instance. Uh, we just named them as preview flows, as you can see here, and we can use the keyboard and mouse actually 
like this or even the panel to, to switch them uh, between the different uh, flows. So I'll, I'll just go to preview one, uh, flow one. Further down on the page, we place the scopes paired to each source video, as you can see here. Many other uh, features could be incorporated into this page with a fully customized layout and look based on the requirements of your head-end or production workflow to provide the best experience to the operators, engineers, and even the management team. Next, on the fusion panel, we have allocated this bay of four-way uh, bottoms that we, by the way, configured to be only one way. So it's just like a push bottom, although they are four four-way actually uh, bottoms, uh, to freely select the program and previews and switch between them. And we have an OLED pair actually to each bottom. We split the OLEDs, so the top section is telling us it's a preview like this one or program like this one and the uh, bottom section of the OLED is just a name a name of the service <coughs> the flow names actually are automatically populated from a config file so they are not hard-coded which makes it super easy to do, to replicate or expand in no time here we have some some LEDs bar uh, uh, but we haven't actually configured them all the way here um, so you can we can program it if you need some further indication on the status of the widgets or the panel itself the second bay of four-way bottoms here are used to individually control the scope types which are paired to the videos uh, as you can see it's rotating between let's say diamond bay four and vector scope uh, you can individually actually control them diamond waveform and vector here and uh, you can you can rotate this as per, as per your requirements uh, we can even go uh, further down and add a particular type of a scope if needed for instance we can show a particular color space of the vector scope in this PLC setup though we just incorporated the default scope types obviously the labels are also updated based on the selected scope with this button here we are turning on and off the time code of course you will see the time code if there is information actually in the in the flow uh, with this knob we it's, at the moment it's mute it control the basically audio it's on mute now we can increase and decrease in the step of tens and we can go to mute again and the, the last knob here is uh, for controlling the uh, safe areas and you can actually uh, go to title and action and switch between action and title as shown here or turn it off all together and finally here you go you are about to see both system in action working together as you can see here we can switch the flows like this it's actually at the moment looking to preview one you go to preview two and you will see it as a program here and the delay is again because you are pulling the strings from from oslo and then we can switch to the third flow which we call it preview three here but the name of the service is actually actual name has been populated to the panel and then we can we can go to preview four and then we can go back as well back to uh, preview one or flow number one you can individually select the uh, scope of each video regardless which one is shown here you can switch for instance uh, this one is at the moment is wave four i can go to vector as you can see and i can go to diamond view and i can go back to uh, wave four so and it's going to be the same for the rest of them you can individually actually change them if you like <clears throat> or, or you can put all of them same uh, to to wait for and this is particularly uh, very helpful uh, i guess for the live production operators when painting the cameras that can be done remotely uh, as well so the time code is uh, defined to be this bottom but you just need to make sure that there is a time code actually information i know that uh, flow 3 got the time code uh, in the stream uh, as a dash 40 uh, ancillary and then i can turn it on and off uh, like this there is a possibility actually to increase the size of the time code as well uh, but we just use the uh, a, a predefined size for for that one we can just 
show it or not and then we have the uh, audio mute uh, and unmute so uh, yeah so we can we can set, set the volume you can go to another which has a higher level of audio and then you can control it uh, in 10 percent steps you can go back to mute it goes up or you can go mute like this and unmute and it's it's always actually remember the last uh, unmute value on this uh, on this OLED, uh, but but we can actually program it in any other way that is desirable to you. So uh, the next one is the safe area knob. So we have the safe area in action, as you can see this uh, rectangular, and you can change the size of this safe area based on your uh, requirements, and then you can turn it off as well. So one of the things actually we can do uh, is to implement the OP47 decoding and bearing on the on the on the uh, program view. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to a stream with OP47 uh, 2110-40 uh, multicast or ancillary data. But what you can do, we can define a spare button like this or or not, and then turn it on and off, and uh, probably change the size of the. Uh, a closed caption text as well to see the validity and the uh, precision uh, and of course the presence of the OP47 metadata, metadata uh, on your you know, uh, flows uh, in a, a broadcast playout facility. It's all about it for now. Please contact us at TechTel if you like to know more about BridgeTech products, Skyhawk products or integration of these two systems together. An important note is that VB440 Pro can be controlled by any other generic broadcast panels. Likewise, Skyhorn panels can be used for uh, controlling other equipment. So there is no particular ties between these two systems. Here at Tectel, we just happen to be the business partner of these two great vendors. And how do I not? We base our demonstration on their products. Our software development team, broadcast integration team are happy to help you with any other third-party system integration scenarios specific to your workflow. We can help you all the way from consultancy, conceptual design, detailed design, development, integration and commissioning. For more information, please visit us at www.tectel.com.au or contact us at info at Thanks for your time watching this video and see you next time.